Well, blessed Friday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And as yesterday, we were preparing for the, the parable of the wheat and the weeds that we will encounter on Sunday. Now, yesterday may be sound like an unusual verse, but it is coupled with our Isaiah 44 verse, our Old Testament verse, that complements our Matthew 13 reading on the wheat and the weeds. And the first step in understanding the wheat and the weeds is to make sure that we are coming to it with a pure heart of serving God. We are servants of God in the field of God's labor. And while we are part of the planting of this word in this world, the planting of the church, we also are not to do things outside the will of God. And one of the struggles is when you see something wrong to not immediately try to be the righteous warrior and not view a person who is strained with compassion but instead to view them with self-righteousness. And I think that pairing these two together is the right angle because what it is is putting idolatry, putting your own will ahead of God's will, putting your own desires ahead of God's desire. Because God desires all to be saved, but it all comes in his time, not our own. And so we turn to some of the Beatitudes, if not the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, beginning with verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing and inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, Every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. Now there are two points that we equally need to focus on. One is pretty obvious because of what we have in our scripture reading from Matthew 13. The first is, is that there is bad fruit, bad seed, bad plants planted in the midst of God's kingdom. And if we may be so blunt, not just in God's kingdom, in God's church, at least as an earthly institution. I belong to a Lutheran church, and we acknowledge the Augsburg Confession. The Augsburg Confession specifically states in Augsburg 8, what is the church? It says that it is both good and bad fruit planted together. Ultimately, the good fruit will prevail. But Luther brought this up, and Melanchthon specifically in the Augsburg Confession, number 8, that sometimes bad fruit will be mixed in in the church. Sometimes they may even be your leader or even your presider. And Luther brought this up for the sake of asking, what if I still belong to church that is not loyal to the Bible but loyal to the Pope? Are the things that that pastor does valid? Is my baptism valid because he is full of sin? Is Holy Communion that he presides at valid because the person giving it to me or presiding even may be full of sin? And this is where we get the assurance that God's good fruit prevails even in the midst of bad fruit. The actions, if they're done right, not necessarily with the right attitude, but the actions of baptism done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit invoke something greater than the person presiding. The actions of do this in remembrance of me in regards to Holy Communion counteract any bad influence or thistle or weed that may be of the person who is giving it. But we are to acknowledge that even in the midst of thistles 
and other types of weeds. God's good and glorious action is still being done. It is still prospering. The good work of God is being done. These bad people, these bad actors, even if they act good sometimes, will not prevail. Some think that because Jesus is talking about the delay of God's judgment in the planting of the kingdom, that there will also be, you know, how should I put it, people that will ha just be wishy-washy and you don't have to judge them. No, they will be judged. But your job, Christian, is to love them, to respect the good things that they do, and yes, challenge them. But ultimately, if they do not be are not persuaded, to be tolerantly loving to them as a brother and sister. Because ultimately, God will be the judge. And so it is a reminder that this is true. But that also means not to prematurely take them out of the people of God. It also means that you need to respect that they are there and God ultimately will deal with whatever sin they are dealing with. And maybe by your prayers and by your insistence, either actively or behind the scenes, those people will change and the kingdom of God will prevail. Have you ever had an argument with someone in the church where it's been difficult because you acknowledge that you both are brothers and sisters in Christ, but you vehemently disagree? What is great about the church is that you and I, in that situation, can reconcile ourselves and become close again. Ultimately, maybe sometimes, there might be some disagreements that will not avail themselves until the end of time. And in some cases, maybe some of the things you're dealing with are people that ultimately are bad seed. And maybe you know who they are, but what this verse is telling you, don't judge them prematurely. Make sure that you are obedient to God's will and do the good work in the midst of wheat and weeds. Yes, there are ravenous wolves. Beware of them, as it says in Matthew 7. There is bad seed in God's kingdom, but it will not prevail. Good will prevail. Love will prevail. The kingdom of God will prevail. A little bit more insight as we prepare for Sunday this week. And I invite you to join us for the sermon on the wheat and the weeds. It has been, in my experience, somewhat controversial to acknowledge that this sin is not just far away, but close by, and even in the very institutions that God is establishing. But in the end, just like our very bodies that struggle between good and bad, God's word, God's word will prevail. Take care. We'll see you next time.